Hey everyone, welcome back to Well Moonlight Vlogs, or hello if you're new. This week we are making Katara. If you missed last week's video, I decided that I wanted to start crocheting all of the characters from Avatar The Last Airbender. Daisy, do you have to do that right there? Oh well, anyways. Obviously, I had to rewatch the series as I started working on this project, and I designed the Kat the Katara the, <laughs> the character out on my iPad so that I would know in general what colors that I wanted to work on and it, it just makes things a lot easier and I can also make stickers out of the design that I made which is awesome so starting off I wanted to include more real-time footage. I feel like you guys like when I include bits and pieces of that so there will be a lot of that in this video or at least more than there has been in the past if you missed that little text a few seconds ago this is the first attempt at making Katara I would not say that I'm a perfectionist but I was not happy with the first attempt at crocheting her so I finished all of her head body arms legs and decided I didn't like how it was coming out at all. I wanted to completely change how I was shaping everything. And I'm really happy with how it came, but I did spend a day and a half working on this part, the first part where you're, which is what you're seeing right now. And I asked in my Facebook group and you guys seemed like you wanted to see the first part. So this, first part is actually very similar to how I had crocheted Aang in the previous week and basically I just made everything as a one piece item. I start at the head and then I work my way down, I widen out the fabric to create shoulders and then I just skip stitches to create armholes and then I go down a little further and I split the body into two to make legs that sounded kind of morbid i'm so sorry but that that is basically how i did it and then i just go back and fill in the armholes which is what i'm working on right now i'm working on the head and you guys are gonna see that i just didn't like it i had some unkind words to call her and i feel a bit the bit of i feel a little bit rambly today so i'm going to jump off and let you guys just watch me make this first attempt at Katara and then I will I'll, I'll talk again when I start on the second attempt.
Okay, so here is the first attempt at crocheting Katara, which, you know, we're just gonna eat and we're not gonna, we're not gonna keep it because I had it in my head that I could do better. So I actually started from the bottom and then we're gonna move upwards. I started by trying to make the feet is an oval shape and I ended up not doing that. I kind of decided to just go with circles so that it would closer resemble the designs that I had drawn out on my iPad. So basically I just started with the legs and then I crocheted them together. This is a technique that I originally learned like in high school from All About Ami. She had a Tumblr post back then and it that this is how she had done her dragons. So I just made the legs a little bit longer than what I remember the dragons being. I think this is a really cute method and it works really well to have everything be nice and seamless. I did a color change a little above the waist to represent her shirt. Honestly, I am really, really happy that I completely redid everything. And if this video is a little bit long, it is a little bit long because I showed the original version. I hope that doesn't bother you. Hopefully, I'm not going to be redoing all of the Amagami in this future series. And I know that there's gonna be some people that are like, well, I liked the first version. That's almost how it always is. There are people that like the first version of what I do and they don't like the second version, but at the end of the day, I have to be happy with what I'm making and I'm, I'm content that I made this decision. And also Daisy was content to sit with me and be a little monster. There, there were a few parts where she actually crawled on top of me. I don't think I actually got them on video and it was really cute, but very much in the way. Also look at her little toes. Yeah, she sat there for a long time. I love her little toes. She's so ticklish, it's hilarious. So the legs and the chest were one piece together. I left the op the neck hole open so that I would be able to sew it to the head a little bit easier. And then I made the head as a separate piece, just made it about the same size as what I made Aang's head. Originally, I actually tried to make everything way bigger so that I could add more detail and make it a little more detailed and I don't think that was the right way and I actually ended up keeping everything about the same size I just changed the technique of how I was making everything instead of one piece I sewed everything together which I know in last week's video is like the exact opposite of what I had wanted to do but I think it did turn out better so that's that's what I did I did end up closing the whole on the head all the way and then just sewing everything together. I also think that doing it this way made the eyes a little bit more straight. Every time I was crocheting everything as one piece, the eyes would end up like looking to the side. <laughs> so it looked like they were just staring off into the distance. And I I didn't like it. It felt like I had twisted the fabric somehow, even though it was just how I had crocheted it. And I did try to avoid that and keep in mind where everything was when I was crocheting it. But, well, I didn't. So, that's, that's how it ended up. After the head was sewn onto the shoulders, I started off with the arms. I decided to start from the bottom of the arms and move my way up. This makes it so that you can choose the size 
of the hands a little bit easier, and I didn't know the best way to represent her multiple layers of clothing. I know that I could have crocheted those separately and then sewed them on and made it look like she was wearing a different shirt, but I just decided to do color changes. I felt like that would be a lot easier, and I still think it ended up really cute. I just chose the same colors and yarns that I used in the rest of her clothes, and while you can't tell that it's supposed to be multiple layers of fabric, you get the idea that she's wearing lots of shades of blue. And considering that she is like six inches tall, I don't think that's the end of the world. And I just made two of the same arms, and I think I just did two rows of each color, and then I just sewed them onto her shoulders. I did stuff them well enough that it looks like she's actually holding her arms outwards, almost like she's bending, instead of it just being floppy. I think, I think I like that better than if I had done it noodle like, like flappy. I, mm, these are not nice ways to describe things. After I made her arms and sewed them on, I started with the wig cap. This is something that I don't have a lot of knowledge on, as I've said in the past, I don't really make a lot of people, so this whole series is a really big adventure for me. But I have made a mermaid before, and when I was like trying to figure out how to do mermaid hair, I found on Pinterest, I think, where you crochet a large, like basically a hat. You make a hat, the, hair, the same color as the hair that you're going to use, and you put that on her scalp and you insert the hair in. I swear I'm gonna be showing all of this to you. I wanted to make sure I had some slow clips of this to make it less confusing because it was very confusing but also very tedious. T-T-S. T-D-S. Oof. Words are fun. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. The wig cap hat thing went on and then I just started looping in hair. And for the hair, I just cut similar lengths of yarn, the same color as the wig cap. And it's, it's sort of like how you loop in fringe. If you've ever done that, it's a very similar process. And then you, I, I decided to split the hair. You don't have to do this, but I really like the effect. I think it makes it look more hair-like. It's also the most tedious thing ever, and I was literally up until two in the morning just pulling out her hair. But it was worth it. Her hair came out fine. Fine-ish. I don't really know how to do hair on a human, and so doing it on a six foot tall doll... Oh man. I... I think it came out. I don't know if it came out well, but I think it came out. And here is how I was looping in the hair. You just stick your hook into one of the loops and then pull. Yeah, I'm really glad that there are visual images of this and that you don't have to go off of my voiceover. I said that I used a yarn needle to split the yarn and basically you just untwist it enough that you can split you split it into all four sections yarn worsted weight yarn is made up of four pieces and so I just split every single piece of yarn into four and that make, gives it a really nice curly effect I have seen some people take a straightener and it's a great way to make it look like fur or like straight hair but I don't own a straightener. I haven't, well, I, I own a straightener, but I don't really want to put it on yarn because acrylic yarn melts. And I don't think the straightener I have goes to a low enough setting that wouldn't melt the hair. And that would have ruined the entire doll and my straightener. So, Katara has curly hair now.
So once Katara's hair was finished, I decided I wanted to make the skirt. I mean, it's not really a skirt, it's more like just a part of her robes, but it, it, it's flappy and is a different color than her pants. So what I did was I foundation single crocheted wide enough to go around her waist for the belt piece and then I sort of split it in two and did two separate flaps of fabric that ended in white and the I, tr I made sure that the blue matched the blue of her shirt or the top piece of her outfit and I'm really happy with how this came out I really thought it would not come out well but I think I think it looks like her outfit, which is almost all I could have asked for. I did try to embroider a smile on Katara's face, which I 100% regret, and I'm really glad that I frogged it, but it was really difficult to undo once I had done it. I just don't think a smile really suits her as a character because she is one of the more serious characters. I don't mind that I did a smile on Aang because it's Aang, but Katara, eh. And the way I had done a smile, I tried to do like a small smile, it just didn't suit her. But here is the end result, I really hope you guys liked it. I tried my best, <laughs> but here is a sneak peek of what's going to come up next week. I would love to hear your guesses in the comments down below. Please make sure to hit subscribe, I'm going to be doing my best to get all of these characters done, and I would love for you to join me.